Hey everyone, welcome back and welcome to week nine and 10 of my Achilles recovery journey. Once again, I am Dr. Stacy Barber. I am the founder and owner of the PhysioFix, which makes me a physical therapist with a recent Achilles rupture. So I am 10 weeks post Achilles repair at this point. I had an open repair and I've been documenting my entire journey to share with you guys and kind of like show you what's working, what's not working and how my accelerated protocol is going. Okay, so there's a lot within week nine and 10. So make sure you guys read below to just like click on which part that you guys are most interested in. Um, but I'm going to start from the beginning. So week nine, the beginning of week nine, I went to the surgeon. Um, it was pretty uneventful. I think that was a waste of an entire appointment because he didn't even look at my, my ankle. He didn't even look at my incision. Um, he didn't ask me to do anything. He just kind of asked how are things going and what have you been doing and I explained you know some of the exercises that I had been doing and he was like well what have you been doing through space which I thought was such a weird question um, and I was like well what do you mean like functionally and he was like yeah and I was like well I've been doing you know deadlifts and squats and you know step ups and stuff like that and he was like oh you need to be doing farmers carries and I'm like well I've been doing those too like I've been doing so many things it's hard to like name them all. So I just got out my phone and started showing him videos of what I'd been doing. And he was incredibly impressed. He was like, wow, you've been doing that. Wow. That's really good. Wow. That's so helpful for posterior chain strength. Like just saying everything that I was doing was exactly what he wanted me to be doing, which leads me to believe that I, you know, me being ahead of where I'm supposed to be is really what he was hoping for with all of his patients, even though the protocol that he gives people is kind of a little bit like slower and a little bit more conservative, but he seems to like the progress at which I'm going. So that's good news. Um, he did say that by week 12, he wants me to be doing jump roping, which I think is a big jump once again. And I know I've kind of spoke to these big jumps quite a few times, um, but if we're just like learning how to walk again and obviously we do not have a single like calf raise, right? No one has that by three months, but he expects me to go from, you know, just starting to walk to jump roping in 12 weeks or in four weeks, because that was like, you know, eight ish to 12, which I think is just a big jump. Um, he also mentioned no ballistics, no ballistic exercises, which is essentially kind of what jump roping is. So I'm kind of wondering how people are able to maintain that no ballistic rule and then start jump roping. Um, what else? He told me, oh, after I asked him, because he didn't really mention much else, he, I went back to his office and I was like, hey, one more question. Um, can I do you know, as much dorsiflexion as I want to at this point? And he said, yes, but not loaded in range dorsiflexion. So, and I was like, well, does that mean you don't want me to like do heavy back squats in a full dorsiflex position? He was like, yes. And I was like, well, what if I'm wearing my squat shoes because I'm an Olympic weightlifter? And he was like, well, that's okay because um, then it's putting you in more plantar flexion. So then you're not using as much dorsiflexion. So I'm like, okay, cool. But it had me thinking afterwards, like he said, I could push dorsiflexion, you know, and do his, do full range of motion there. But I'm like wondering what full range of motion is and full range of motion is different for every person. So um, obviously there's like a little ambiguity there. Um, if that's even a word, I think I just made that up, but it just doesn't make sense. It's very subjective. Um, so just keep that in mind. Oh, he also wants me to come back in like five weeks. So I will be about 14 weeks post-op at that point. So hopefully I'll be jump roping. Speaking of jumping, I did start jumping this week. Um, I did some like TRX squat jumps and I also started working on some deceleration, like landing drills on one leg. Um, I can tell you that obviously I'm shifting away. I'm not using my full body weight to push up, but the pushing up and going up is a lot easier than the coming down. I feel like I just smacked the ground with my foot and I cannot decelerate at all on that side. So that's obviously something that I need to start working on. I also did back squats this week. Well, week nine and week 10, of course, because I squat every week, but week nine, um, based on his, you know, restrictions that he doesn't want me to do, you know, full loaded dorsiflexion, um, super heavy back squats. I put an extra plate under my heels. So I have my weightlifting shoes, which actually already puts me in plantar, plantar flexion. And then I put an extra heel um, lift, which was a plate under my heel to be able to put me in even more plantar flexion. So then I could really focus on the range of motion and not worry about overloading my ankle. Um, so I did that for the first week, week nine. And then I went into just 
normal weightlifting shoes week 10. So I'm kind of gradually lowering it down. Um, maybe next week, week 11, I'll do just like a normal shoe. And then maybe week 12, maybe I'll do like my Vivo barefoot shoes, like flat shoes. Um, so I'm just gradually loading it a little bit more and progressing that dorsiflexion. Uh, a couple other things I did this week, I did one of these last two weeks, I did sumo deadlifts for the first time. Kind of a weird position, very externally rotated, even for the foot. So that kind of felt kind of weird at first. I really had to like cue myself to externally rotate and kind of push through and not compensate. Um, I also started doing some split squat, like lunges. Um, that's really good, guys. If you're not doing those, then I think that you should start adding that in. It's a really good segue to be able to do some lunges. Like I mentioned before that Forward lunges are really hard for me, especially when my like surgical leg is behind because you have to have a lot of control of that foot and kind of go into some plantar flexion and then bend your knee and continue that plantar flexion as you move forward and come back, which is just like an isometric hold of that, you know, gastroc soleus Achilles complex. So this way you can kind of still load the Achilles, but you kind of load it in incrementally. So it's a good segue. Um, I was doing those front foot elevated as well as both feet elevated this week. And I think that's gonna be really helpful for like isometric strengthening in my calf. I also just did a lot more single leg strengthening, especially like in week 10, I really started my own like strong leg Stacy program and it has a ton of single leg work in there. Um, it kicked my butt. Like honestly, I realized that I can do a lot of these movements, but to load them up and do them well and not compensate, that's a different story entirely. Something else I want to mention is the fact that like Movements that I've done for years feel weird. And what I mean by that is like, I'm an Olympic weightlifter. I've done a lot of push presses in my life, right? And like, they used to come really simple and natural to me. And I didn't even think about the movement pattern. But now since I've had this Achilles injury, I can do push presses again. I can actually push up. But now I'm wondering like, is the amount that I'm pushing up and going on my toes the same amount that I used to do? Because it just feels weird. It kind of feels like, I just don't have that awareness built in anymore. And I'm like either doing too little or too much and just, I don't know. I know it's gonna come back, but it just, it only takes a little time off of doing it to really have to like relearn how to do things. I mean, it's only been like 11 weeks for me cause I got surgery right away and I lifted actually the same day that I hurt myself. So it really hasn't been very long at all, but 12 weeks is obviously makes a big difference. Plus having this injury and having to like rewire myself to like really use my leg and not compensate. A couple other things. Um, I noticed that like the pressure in my foot when I'm standing, I'm still shifting back on my heels. And I really noticed that my heels are really like tender near the end of the day, or if I'm just standing for long periods of time. And I also noticed that when I'm wearing my Birkenstocks that like all of the indentation is in the heel and the big toe, which indicates that I'm not pushing through my four little toes at all. And I'm just trying to rely on those two bigger structures. Um, but that also kind of means that I'm not getting full Achilles soleus gastroc activation, right? Cause I'm still kind of avoiding things and I'm starting to overuse my post tib. Um, and that muscle right now is angry. So, it just feels really swollen. Um, the post tib, if you're not familiar, it goes on like the medial side of your leg. So it runs down and then it goes this way, right by this medial malleoli, which is that, that ankle bone on the inside. Um, so I have some swelling here and I just have some irritation. So it's really tender and it's really pissed off because it's literally been doing all the work for a very long time because that's the only thing that was holding on when everything else ruptured, right? Um, so I'm really trying to like shift my weight away from that big toe and really try to use the other toes too. So I take off pressure from that posterior tib and I don't develop some sort of like tendinopathy or some sort of like posterior shin splints, which is pretty common after these sort of injuries. I did start transitioning into tennis shoes. So I've been wearing Birkenstocks since like week six full time. Um, and now that my, my incision is a little bit more healed. So the reason why I went to Birkenstocks full time is because my incision kept opening up. Like the pressure and the swelling throughout the day just kind of created that incision um, to have pressure too and just open right back up. So it's been kind of closed for like a week now. It was a week now as of week nine. So it started you know, being healed week eight. Um, so I'm able to transition into tennis shoes. So week nine, I wore tennis shoes probably by like the end of the week, four hours a day. Um, making sure to use that gel protector pad that I have. Um, and then week 10, I was able to transition up to about eight hours a day. 
Um, I do notice still that I have quite significant swelling throughout the day when I'm on my feet. I'm on my feet all the time being a physical therapist. So I'm really trying to like stop, elevate ice, you know, throughout the day. But sometimes it just isn't possible. Like I just had the craziest week of pretty much my business um, and my office manager was out of town. So everything kind of came back on me. Um, so that really took a toll on my Achilles recovery too, because everything was like so swollen and it just felt like nothing was working right because there was so much swelling around there. Um, so yeah, tennis shoes, it's going pretty well. I am trying to wear a different, <laughs> different shoe every day because right now it's like certain shoes kind of sit higher and certain shoes like squeeze more on the heel. And I'm trying to find the right shoe that like makes me feel like supported, stable, but also doesn't rub on that incision too much. I'm still noticing my gait and my stride is just all off. Um, I've been really noticing that like I'm taking a bigger stride with my left leg or my injured side coming forward. And obviously that kind of makes sense because I'm still limited in dorsiflexion. So then when my right leg comes forward and my back leg is my left leg, my surgical leg, that one has to have more dorsiflexion and it has to have the ability to kind of like push off the ball of the foot and then go into that like a you know calf raise segment to be able to transition back forward. Um, so I'm shortening the stride so I don't even have to do that portion, right? Um, so I've been trying to make a conscious effort this week to focus on you know having more of a symmetrical stride. And I really started to implement these last two weeks this treadmill protocol, that's what I'm calling it. So I'm going on the treadmill for 10 minutes, trying to hit every day. I'm not hitting 10 minutes every day, but I'm really trying hard to. Um, and I, the first week I started with like one mile an hour and the incline was like three. So I was going two minutes forward using the arm bars to like offload my leg a little bit so I can really slow it down and focus on pushing off. And then I would go two minutes to the side, which helps me really push off going to that one side and then helps me like absorb force going to the other side. And then I would go to four minutes going backwards. The first two minutes, my legs were bent and really focusing on using my calf muscle to push me backwards. And then the last two minutes, straight leg, same sort of thing, really focusing on that push back. So that was week nine, same sort of thing week 10, except for I increased um, to 1.5 miles an hour. Woo! Um, so community ambulation, guys, is 1.7 miles an hour if you live in the United States. I don't know what it is if you live elsewhere, but um, I'm still not walking fast enough to be considered a community ambulator. So I'm trying to increase my speed um, and then obviously try to work on symmetry at the same time. So I'm really trying hard to do that treadmill protocol. So if you have access to a treadmill and you have the ability to like use the arms to like slow things down and focus on the push off, I recommend doing that and even filming it too because you not you might not realize how much you're compensating until you start seeing it and you're like shoot like I feel like I'm walking pretty normal but our bodies are really smart and they just try to like go to the path of least resistance and avoid the pain but sometimes you have to push through the pain like post Achilles rupture when you have to push to strengthen that Achilles <laughs> well okay so um, week nine I had this idea that I was like you know this this sock that I wear, this compression sock, it might be like impeding my ability to have blood flow, you know, down where my Achilles is trying to heal. So what if I take my compression sock off? Maybe it will improve my circulation to that area, which we know we need circulation for healing. Um, so I tried that week nine and I can tell you that that did not help. I had a ton more swelling throughout the day and at the end of the day that I felt like it was like actually setting me back because I wasn't wearing that compression sock to like really keep that swelling to a minimum. So week 10, I put the sock back on and just focused on elevating my leg whenever I could and obviously taking off the compression sock when I was at home or you know obviously when I'm sleeping. It's just kind of funny how we go back and forth through things like me being like so educated on this, I'm like, you know what, what if, what if I do this? I think this might help. And then I'm like, you know what, I tried it for a week. It's not working, maybe I should try this. So it's like, I just go back and forth and I'm trying several things. And I think that's kind of how it should be, you know, trial and error because every person is different and everyone's gonna respond differently to different things. So you have to find what works for you, which may be different than what works for me. And physical therapy on week nine and 10, um, we did a, a lot more calf strengthening, so I'm really trying to get that, you know, isometric calf strength, that um, eccentric calf strength, which I have zero, um, and the concentric calf strength. 
did a lot of that, did a lot of balance training, started to implement some rotational um, balance tasks and stuff like that because I feel like I've just been living in this one plane for so long and I'm not strong nor am I stable in these different other positions, which I need to be because that's that's functionally how we move and how we live. And I shouldn't have to like be so conscious of how I'm moving, you know, after I'm recovered from this surgery. Um, some other things we started like actually tracking some other metrics for calf strength. So I was doing, and you'll, you'll see a video, um, some single leg calf work seated with a cable machine. So straight leg. And I was able to do this with 30 pounds for like 20 reps week nine. And then I was able to bump up to 35 pounds. Um, for week 10, same reps, 20 reps. So it's like gradually getting better. Um, and then my other side, my non-injured side, I was able to do like around 50 pounds. It kind of felt similar to what, you know, the 30 or the 35 felt. So that gives me hope that I'm getting closer to like being able to do at least calf raises without shifting because I still notice that I'm doing that too. The wider that I move my legs apart with calf raises, the more I'm inclined to shift away from my injured leg. Oh, and we also started doing more stair training because um, obviously stairs are in my house and just part of life. Sidewalks are part of life too. Um, so we've been doing that. Once again, it's hard. Um, it's really hard to control. I feel like I'm like leaping over the legs still, but week nine is the first week that I was actually able to go down the stairs straight without having to pivot to the side. And then week 10, um, I started occasionally not having to use like the stairs, stair um, railing or my hands. I felt like confident sometimes, um, but then other times I don't feel confident at all. And I still kind of walk, you know, one foot together, one foot together, one foot together. Um, this last weekend, like a couple days ago, I went out of town. I went up north where there was snow and ice. And this was one of those like realizations that I am very fearful of certain things that used to be so simple, you know? Um, we had a cabin and we had to go up these stairs, which were kind of covered in part ice, part snow. And I was terrified. Like, I was like, I can't do this. Like, I had to like hold onto the rail. I had to go like one foot up at a time. And I like felt like I reverted back to who I was several weeks ago, but really it was because the fear, like, you know, I didn't want to slip or fall because what would happen if I was slipping or falling, you know? So the mental aspects are very, very real. And even like the people that like know better, they're like, you know what? I've got the strength there. I should be able to do this normally. It's still, there's still several things that like get into your head and you're like, I don't know if I'm ready to do, to do that. And it's scary, like that fear and the apprehension aspect is really scary because it can hold you back and it can obviously prevent us from progressing forward. But obviously if you just like turn it off, then that's dangerous too because you know, what if I did slip? Another thing that was kind of cool, at the end of that trip up north, I was able to go down these like rocky stone steps. So you'll see a video, one foot at a time and I felt confident doing it without holding on. Um, I was even able to take a video, obviously, because I'm posting the video. So that was kind of cool because rocky steps, one, are not straight. Two, they're not like the same distance apart every step. And three, obviously, like some of them had more rocks on them. And some of them were like more, you know, narrow, shallow, stuff like that. So even though, you know, I was scared at the beginning of the trip, I did feel like I was still continuing to make like small incremental progress and do like a little bit more of like the things I used to do, um, which is which is good. So that's kind of a good summary of week nine and 10. I'm still noticing a lot of compensations. Obviously, like the more I do, the more I notice um, the compensations. So, you know, the walking stuff, I'm doing a lot more of that. I'm doing it faster. I'm doing it, you know, uphill, downhill, stuff like that. So I notice what I'm doing and it's driving me crazy. Um, I'm also noticing that like my heel just feels like it's like fixed and it doesn't want to move. So usually when we go into a calf raise, your heel should kind of do this like inversion. It's called calcaneal inversion. Um, mine is not doing that. And so even when I'm standing, sometimes if I'm filming myself from the back, you'll notice that like my heel is kind of rolled under, which is weird too, because it never used to be like that. But I think part of it is because, especially for my surgery, I had extra, like two extra anchors, at least two, there might be four, um, placed in my heel because my surgeon wanted me to like kind of progress things a little bit faster than normal. But those extra anchors in my heel 
may be preventing my heel from moving. So I'm really trying to like get my heel to start moving. Um, the heel doesn't move a ton, but it does move. And um, I'm doing some self mobilizations, trying to do those like frequently throughout the day um, to get that heel moving because you need that, that heel movement for like calf raises for walking, for jumping, for literally every normal activity. So if I cannot get that, it's really gonna like, per, or like decline um, my progress, or I'm not gonna be able to progress as fast, or maybe, you know, maybe I may never get it back. So I'm really trying to do what I can right now, and I, I've talked to my physical therapist about that too, so we're really trying to like, work on a lot of inversion, eversion, trying to get my ankle, foot, and heel moving like it's supposed to, because right now I feel like that's kind of the holdup with like getting everything else to just start moving normal. Okay, so that's a quick summary. A lot of things went well. Um, jumping obviously went well. Squatting went well. I'm not shifting when I'm squatting either, which is really good. Um, deadlifts are still going good. Sumo deadlifts this week. Um, those split squats are really good. Going downstairs normal, really good. Going downstairs in a like unpredictable environment, also good. Um, doing that treadmill training, good. Kind of wearing shoes more often, good. There's a lot of good things going on um, and it's easy for us to lose sight of all those good things because there's still so many things to achieve and there's still a long road to go, but things are going good in week nine and week 10. So let me know if you have any questions, um, comments, concerns, drop them below. Make sure to subscribe and I hope you guys have a great day.